So just again, we have the tapers, the Texas Academic Performance Report, uh, the PEAMS Financial Standard Report, which we had a financial hearing a couple of months ago, the campus performance objectives, which are the campus plans, um, the report on violent incidents that we make each year, uh, and then a report on graduates. So those are just some of the things that are included. Uh, we'll hit a few of those tonight. Uh, the district rating is also uh, part of the presentation, as well as some of will just do a, a kind of a sampling of some of the statistics that you can find in the taper, as well as some information on our four-year and five-year uh, graduation rates. Um, new this year, the uh, report asked that we um, uh, reveal or, or summarize the number of counselors and librarians at each campus. So that's new in this year's report. So start with just the highlights. The, if you look at the taper, it will show that our, we have an accountability rating of a B. Uh, in the special education determination status, we meet requirements under the uh, ASVAB or the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery. We meet requirements. And again, this is last year's report on last year's data. And some of this data will go back a couple of years, such as attendance and uh, completion rates. The, uh, enrollment trends over the years, and this is again according to what is in the taper, which is always going to be a little bit different than our actual enrollment, which right now is over 63,000. But this just shows the trend over the last uh, several years. And you can see we, where we trend up, continue to grow. Um, this is just the trend <coughs> where the blue line and the state it represents the red line. Uh, and so most of these will show a comparison with the state or some other districts that are near us, uh, as well as or like us. Uh, and this, this trend line shows that, um, and these is, this is the eight-year trend for students that receive disciplinary placements. That is the percentage of students that went to a DAEP or the JJAEP. Um, so it's a good positive trend. This is just a snapshot of our membership in 2018. What does our school district look like demographically? Um, and then also... This is just an example of some of the information that's in the taper. Uh, we're the blue column. The state is in the red column. The green columns are representing of different districts nearby or um, in our comparison group. And you can see how all students performed at approaches grade level or above on the star last year, and that's for all subjects. So in the report, there's also a breakdown by student groups, and I'll just give you a couple of examples. This is, for example, the English language learner, all subjects uh, group. It shows how we perform. Certainly an area we want to keep working on. And it really goes without saying, I think every area that we see are areas that we want to continue to work on and improve. Special education, again, this shows how we performed in terms of uh, both reading and math, that approaches grade level or above. And when we look at our economically disadvantaged students, <coughs> broken out, 74% um, uh, were approaches or above on all tests. In terms of reading and math, broken out, met or exceeded performance. Uh, and you can just see how we break out and we're the blue columns and how we compare to the state. And for all students, all subjects, masters, it performed at the master's grade level, which is the highest level on the test. We had 34% compared with the state average of 22%. Our attendance rate for 2017, this is uh, two years behind, was 96.4%. We actually compare very favorably. This is just a trend. I'm always interested in trends, and just to show you our something that we made it a concerted effort a few years ago to start working on improving, and, and we've seen some growth in uh, student attendance over the last 10 years. So we represent the blue line, and the state represents the red line. And those little dotted lines are the any of the uh, trend lines. In terms of dropout data for grades 9 through 12. In 2017, we had 0.2% of those students enrolled in grades 9 through 12 dropped out. And that's compared to the state average of 1.9%. You can see it's one of those really good-looking slides for our district. Uh, 
the, the state tracks data in terms of cohorts. It is when a group of students enters school in the ninth grade, how many four years later graduate. They also track it for five years and even six. And so this is just a sample of what it looks like. This is the class of 2016. This is a five-year cohort look. So there would have been a four-year cohort the report for that same class. Um, this is what they look like after five years. 96.1% graduated, 1.5% received the GED, 0.2% uh, continued, and then 2.2% dropped out or were unaccounted for. In terms of the four-year cohort, the most recent class of 2017 for which we have data, 95.6% that entered in ninth grade graduated with 1% receiving the GED, 2% continuing, and 1.4% dropping out. Uh, recommended plans and, and distinguished achievement plans. This is 2017 will be the last year of that data, and so they're transitioning to a different graduation plan. Um, but for that last year, um, we, we did very well. Uh, good way to end. Good way to end, yes. Went out on top, 91.6%. Uh, College ready graduates, uh, it's just another way of looking at students' scores and determining if they, they're deemed college ready and 61.3% uh, of our students for the class of 2017. In terms of students taking the AP test, and we gave a very comprehensive report earlier this year, but 35.3% uh, <coughs> of the students took an AP test. That's how we compared, which one of the higher rates in the, in the area, if, of the highest. How many of those students scored at or above the criteria? And you can see we did very well. So we tested the largest group and still had a very high percentage of students that scored at the criterion level at 65.4%. In terms of our students that took the SAT or the ACT in 2017, we had 70.1%. And again, and I think that's an area we, we were targeting for growth uh, because we did very well. Uh, so 45.7% of our students scored at or above the criterion. Um, but again, I think there's room to add testers to that sample. Uh, for the SAT average score, it was 1142 for that class, <coughs> which compares favorably to the state, 1019. Our ACT average for the class of 2017 was 23.5 compared to 20.3 for the state. In terms of students that completed nine or more hours of dual credit in, in any subject or three or more hours in uh, English language arts or math, 23.4% uh, of that class of 2017 met that criteria. And again, I think we're, one of the things we're proud of is we have students that do both dual credit and or uh, AP classes. So either way, they can earn that college credit through either of those vehicles. And for those of you that are not aware, advanced placement classes are courses that students take the course and they can take a test. If they score high enough, they receive college credit. So we, we, we offer both tracks. I'm going to shift gears and off of the academic reports into the, some of the financial highlights. And again, uh, this comes from the uh, PEAMS report. I'll just note that we are one of three districts that has received um, the, uh, the maximum five stars every year it's been available. So we're very proud of that. And that's a uh, reflection on our outstanding finance department. Tax rates, uh, in terms of, we've seen our performance, so we, we look at how do we compare in terms of uh, <coughs> tax rate for our uh, district, and you can see we're at the lowest in our comparison group at $1.28. So how do we spend our money? This is, again, based on the actual expenditures uh, from the TEA website, um, and then you can kind of just I'll highlight a few of these. I won't read them all, but uh, for instruction, we spent 60 point, almost 61% of our budget on instruction compared to the state average of just over 56%. I'll highlight that um, we, we spend more than the state average on school leadership at 6.01%. We spend higher than the state average on guidance and counseling at 3.96%. Um, we spend a little higher on health services or, or basically school nurses than the state average. Our transportation is higher than the state average at 4.63%. We have a very large geographical school district. Uh, we spend less than the state average on food service 
uh, a little less on ex extracurricular at 2.2 percent. Our uh, district administration is roughly half of the state average of 3.23 uh, percent at 1.61 percent. Um, in terms of data processing, we spend less than the state average uh, at 1.35 percent. A little information about our staff, a little over 50 percent of our entire staff are teachers um, and roughly 2.5 percent of our um, staff is at campus administration level, 0.4% uh, of our staff is at central administration, 28.1% is in the auxiliary departments. Uh, the average years of experience is 11.2 uh, years. The average years with the district is 7. Uh, our turnover rate is just over 12% and our average teacher salary for the last year was $56,879, higher than the state average. In terms of criminal incidents, we report this every year. Um, we had 47 reportable criminal incidents at 12 different campuses. 34 of those were uh, felony controlled substance. And probably the greatest number of those come out of medicine cabinets, uh, unfortunately. Uh, there has been an increase, we think, with some of the, the, the vape devices and uh, some illegal oils. Uh, so there's been some increase there this year, but that'll show up on next year's report. This is the summary by, by campus of where those uh, activities occurred. And you can see there's a total. Uh, and this was up from last year. And uh, again, I would attribute that mostly to the felony controlled substance charges. Also part of the report is how do our students do after they graduate from high school and they go off to college? And again, this is data that's just tracked by the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board, so it's specific to state colleges and it won't have information for out-of-state colleges or private universities. Um, but this gives you a total. We had 1,418 of our graduates uh, that enrolled in uh, a two- or four-year college in Texas. Uh, and this is just the breakdown of how they did. You can see there were some that didn't do as well, and there are many that did very well. Um, and so we hope that after that first year, we got better. Um, there's a part of the sample that we don't know how they did. In terms of counselors and librarians per campus, um, again, generally we staff our schools, uh, at least at the elementary level, with at least one nurse and one, uh, I'm sorry, one counselor and one librarian at each schools. Some are more than one based on their size. <clears throat> um, and this actually is from last year, so our numbers will go up as we add schools or add counselors. But for the, for the year ending in 2018, we had 136 counselors <coughs> on campuses and 62 librarians. Again, all of this information will be available in a, a report that's available online um, it's really, like I said, it's just a compilation of many reports that you're clicking on to get access to. So uh, it's a combination of all those reports and then whatever's not in a report is actually uh, online. So we'll have all that available uh, in the next couple of days. Thank you, Dr. Hines. At this time, we'll open it to public comment. If you'd like to make a comment about the performance report, if you would come to the podium and state your name and if you could keep your comments to two or three minutes, we would appreciate it. Okay, I'm seeing no movement. Thank you, Dr. Hines. Mm -hmm. And if I may, just uh, Vice President Hubert, before we start, I know we have a lot of educators in the room, a lot of parents in the room, and I, and I would just like to tell you, thank you for what you do that makes <laughs> that report possible because that's absolutely amazing results, and that's a direct reflection of the great work that you do every day, so thank you all for the work that you do. I call this meeting of the Conroe Independent School District Board of Trustees to order. Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551, and the time is 616, 17? 617, thank you. Um, please join us in our invocation that will be given by John Husbands, and our Pledge of Allegiance will be uh, 
call actually some students and Dale Inman will help us with that. Before we get started tonight, I'd ask that you remember the Burns family. Bobby was a long term, uh, long time employee of the district, uh, director of planning and construction for many years. Lost his wife, Wilma, last week. I'd ask that you all remember him in your prayers. If you wish tonight, join me in prayer as we begin the meeting. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, you control all and we're thankful for that. We ask that you be with those that you need your comfort and your healing tonight. Father, we thank you for the blessings that you bestowed on all of us. Father, we thank you for our teachers and our students and our parents, and our administrators. And Father, we'd ask that their continued success and that everything that they do be pleasing to you. As we go through this meeting, we ask that everything that we say or do and how we act be pleasing to you and honor you in all that we do and say. It's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. We're privileged tonight to have with us the color guard from the Oak Ridge High School Air Force Junior ROTC. Comprising this color guard is Cadet Haven, <coughs> Cadet Santiago Baez, Cadet Torres, Cadet Lee, led by Senior Master Sergeant Rodney Evans. Leading the uh, pledges will be students from Hauser, Ray Robichaud, and Bryson McCafferty. Air Force. Please join us for the pledge to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please join us to the pledge to the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and seated. Thank you, Board Member Husbands and Board, Men, Board Member Inman. Item 2A, Special District Recognition, Dr. Noel. All right, this time I'll invite Ms. Denise Sapola, our Coordinator of Guidance and Counseling, to introduce our award winner. <clears throat> Vice President Hubert, members of the Board, and Dr. Noel. The Rosine Fleming Award was established in memory of Rosine DuBose Fleming, who was a counselor for the Richardson ISD when she died in 1971. Rosine was instrumental in the organization of TSCA, the Texas School Counselor Association, in 1966, and she served as the TSCA secretary. This award is given each year to an outstanding school counselor at each level and stands as a living memorial to Rosine's dedication, professional involvement, <laughs> and growth. <clears throat> Dr. Christine Butler will uh, introduce our CISD award winner. Vice President Hubert, members of the board, Dr. Noll, it is a great honor to stand before you tonight to celebrate the well-deserved recognition of our counselor at Bradley Elementary, Ashley Wright. School counselors are known to be kind and compassionate. They're known for their open doors, their listening ears, and their open minds. They provide comfort, advice, and unconditional acceptance to all. If you've ever met Ashley Wright, our school counselor at Bradley Elementary, you'll know that she is this and so much more. In fact, on campus, we like to say she's a little extra. <laughs> As a school counselor, Mrs. Wright makes a positive impact on the lives of our students, staff, and families at the Bradley community. She brings her bundle of energy in the morning to greet students with a smile and a high five or a hug, and somehow that same level of energy lasts throughout the day, regardless of what the day holds. 
She makes herself readily available for students, staff, and family, not open, only with her open door policy and visibility throughout the <coughs> campus on a daily basis, but also through her user-friendly self-referral system that students can use to request time with her when needed. She's quick to respond to their needs while also still securing their instructional time in the classroom. Mrs. Wright coordinates opportunities for student leadership, whether it's selecting and working with fourth grade DEN squad members or using students as examples during their guidance lessons. She includes all students and finds ways for them to soar. She also leads our one and only U Awards where students are recognized for special accomplishments or success in the classroom or just practicing the character we're focusing on that month. It is because of this and so much more I am honored to recognize with you tonight the TSCA Elementary School Counselor of the Year, Mrs. Ashley Wright. So I wrote my own little comments here. I'd like to give you some perspective on tonight's honoree. February 4th through the 8th, 2019 <clears throat> was the National School Counseling Week sponsored by the American School Counselor Association, focusing attention on the unique contributions of professional school counselors. These school counselors are a vital part of the educational process for all of our students by actively engaging students to help them examine their own abilities, their own strengths, their own interests, their own talents, and to create working partnerships with parents and guardians as they encounter the challenges of raising children in today's world. School counselors focus on positive ways to enhance students' social and personal skills, their educational and career development, the work within uh, to work with educators and other educational support staff <clears throat> to help students realize their potential and to set healthy optimistic and realistic aspirations for themselves <clears throat> these school counselors are experienced educators with master's degrees in guidance and counseling, and they use their combined training and experiences as an integrated part of the total educational program for a student's success. While I was heading to class one night to teach at Sam Houston State University in the Woodlands, I passed Mrs. Wright on the stairs. Knowing that she was a school teacher for Conroe ISD, I stopped to say hello to her and to inquire about what she was doing there. She let me know that she was working on her master's degree in counseling and wanted to be a school counselor one day. I remember encouraging her and letting her know that both increasing her education and wanting to be a counselor were very noble plans and I wished her well. Since that time, she has completed her master's degree, she has passed the national counselor exam, and she is working on her hours to become a Texas licensed professional counselor in addition to already being a professional school counselor. Mrs. Wright is truly an asset to Bradley Elementary and to Conroe ISD. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees, uh, I would like to add our congratulations on your selection as the TSCA Elementary School Counselor of the Year and to say publicly we are very proud of you and all of our school counselors for the work that you do each and every day to help our students be successful. Thank you.
<laughs> Congratulations, Ms. Wright. Appreciate you. Uh, item 2B, Special District Recognition, uh, Dr. Noel. All right, tonight we will celebrate our 2019 TMEA All-State <coughs> Musicians. Uh, and to, here to introduce them will be Bob Horton, our Coordinator of Fine Arts. Dr. Bob Horton. Good evening, Board of Trustees. As Dr. Noll said, my name is Dr. Bob Horton, and I'm the Coordinator of Fine Arts. And on behalf of the over 300 arts teachers who impact the 63,000 students of Conroe ISD, I want to thank you for your constant support of the arts. Conroe ISD is recognized at the state and national level as a leader in the arts, and this is largely due to your commitment to a well-rounded education, which includes high-quality arts experiences. Vice President Hubert, members of the board, and Dr. Null, Thank you for giving recognition to the 36 students named 2019 awesome. Texas Music Educators Association TMEA All-State Musicians from Conroe ISD. As you can see, they're lined up on the wall, so I'll just give you a very brief word of explanation that this is, um, membership as an All-Stater is a competitive process that begins all across the state in 33 different regions. Individual musicians perform selected music for a panel of judges who rank them anonymously. And from this ranking, a select group advances to the region level and then on to eight area auditions. And those are all elimination rounds. The highest ranking musicians judged at the area competitions qualify to perform in a TMEA All-State Music Group. These All-State students participate in three days of rehearsals directed by nationally and internationally recognized conductors during the TMEA Clinic and Convention, which we just concluded this past Saturday. Their performances for thousands of attendees bring this extraordinary event to a close. To give you a little perspective, over 1,700 students are selected through this process that begins with over 71,000 students statewide. And from that group to earn membership in one of our 15 all-state ensembles makes these students the top two and a half percent of all students who initially entered the audition process. And 36 of them are from Conroe ISD. They are lined up here. Their talent and this uh, audition, of course, come uh, through individual means, but no one gets anywhere alone, and many of their teachers are here tonight. And before we call the names of these students, I would ask if you would please also join me in thanking their wonderful teachers who are scattered all around the room. So So we'll, um, we have almost exactly the same number of band and choir students, so we're going to call the band students up first. And so uh, Dylan Boyder. Come on over, Dylan. Wyatt Cade. Come on over here. Travis Carlson. Chance Castaneda. Gabe Christensen. Maddie Flake. Claudia Fuenmayor. Sam Gomez. Bryce Jackson. Harrison Jin. Alex Kahns.
Lucas Massé. <laughs> Lucas Massé. <laughs> Jack Perkins. Travis Stromberg. Franklin Tang. Richard Vasquez. Sunny Yu. Sorry, we have several different stacks of things here. I apologize to Ryan Como. <laughs> Ryan, there you go, buddy. And we're very proud of our orchestra student, Miss Riley Curran. To begin our choir students, Aiden Adcock. <laughs> Enzo Bellingardi. <laughs> Emily Brinsfield. Melissa Chow. <laughs> Nicholas Devia. <laughs> Riley Glaceman. <laughs> Jimmy Harvin. Dylan Mansfield. <laughs> Rebecca Meese. <laughs> Aranza Perrette. <laughs> Grace Schecksneider. Shelby Steele. <laughs> Katie Stoby. <laughs> A special word about young Miss Stoby, who made the All State Choir four years in a row. Wow. <laughs> Alora Thompson. Garrett Thompson. Brandon Vesey. And Kyler West. Young Mr. West also made the All-State Choir four years in a row. On behalf of the board, we want to say congratulations for all your hard work. Several of us on the board are products of Conroe ISD ourselves, and each one of us brings special experiences. Mine happens to be the music uh, curriculum at Conroe ISD. Um, although I didn't major in music, music still helped me pay for college and it's something that's a part of my life to this day. Um, 
you, you, as students, you know that there's a lot of focus on STEM education, and I like to say that this board um, is intentional about adding an A and making it STEAM education. We believe very highly in the arts. There's a lot of research that indicates students who study music have a higher temporal spatial learning capacity, consistently score higher on standardized tests, do better in college, do better in their careers. I hope that some of you will take this fabulous talent out into the world and share it as professional musicians. Um, the world needs more beauty, and music helps us find beauty in the midst of chaos. Um, and I hope that you will share that talent with the world, whether it's as a professional musician coming back here to Conroe ISD to be a music educator, or just sharing it with those around you and those that you love, because that's what music is all about, finding joy and beauty inside yourself. And we are so proud of you. Just to, to help put some of those numbers in perspective that Dr. Horton was sharing, what you have accomplished, the odds of getting to be a TMEA All-State musician is roughly the same odds as a high school student athlete getting a college scholarship to any division, one through three. You truly are the best of the best and we are so proud of you. And thank you to the music educators and to the parents for your before school and after school ensemble practices and sectionals and private lessons and everything you've done to help these students succeed. We couldn't do it without you. Again, on behalf of the board, one last time, congratulations. We would love to shake your hands. So we've got a flight like, on the line here. Everybody, everybody's behind you. You're the, you're the start. I'm the start? You're the start. So you got to slide over to snake. Like you're going to go that way. You're going to work your way down the street. You got seven and I got 200. Right? Congratulations. 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 Congratulations, buddy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. A lot of work there. Great job. Great job, sir. Congratulations. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you very much. Congratulations. What do you think? What do you think? Congratulations. Wow, very good. Congratulations. 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 Yeah, so you're doing a rock band or something? Or? <laughs> <laughs> if I can think I'm getting a rock band. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Congratulations. I got her. Not yet. Enzo, Baca, Red. Very nice. Congratulations. Congratulations. Very happy. Congratulations. You what? Congratulations. I'll get a picture of you, I promise. Show me a moment. Congratulations. 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 Buddy. Thank you so much. Congratulations. God bless. Congratulations. Congratulations, sir. Have a nice day. Congratulations. Great job. Good job. Congratulations. Very happy for you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Very heavy for you. Congratulations. 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 President, huh? Is that a book Amazon? Yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. He's scheduled to be here. Oh. That's not good. Hey, Mr. Huber. Oh, my God. Did you get down to restore his house then? I don't know how many get accepted? I didn't get that number. It is, uh, Certainly quite an honor for these students to be named TMEA All-State Choir Members. And I will tell you that um, this year I had my first opportunity to attend the TMEA convention. And uh, I went to watch an honor, one of our choirs from McCullough Junior High who was honored to perform while these students were also in their workshops. Um, Dr. Horton is a pretty modest man. Uh, 
he he shared with me while I was at the convention that over 30,000 people uh, went through the doors of the convention center during the the days of the convention and um, Dr. Horton served this past year as the president of TMEA. He was the presiding officer over that convention. So we just thank him. For now, now he assumes the role that he said everyone aspires to be, and that is past president of <laughs> TMEA. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my son was in that choir on the, the other day as well, and, yes. and he had a great time. If you if you ask him in public, he'll say he's not a choir fan, but in private, Dr. Horton, you guys have gotten a hold of him because he, he likes it. <laughs> <laughs> he really does. All right, item 2C, um, going on with the same theme, special district recognition. I'll turn the time over to Dr. Oh. Noel one more time. Yes, well, we started our evening with the great prelude to our, our meeting with the Oak Ridge High School Orchestra, and we will continue now celebrating our wonderful Oak Ridge feeder zone. Uh, we will start with the video, and then uh, from there we'll uh, we'll get to meet many of our educators from the Oak Ridge feeder. Welcome to Oak Ridge. Our goal is to find a way to reach every student and prepare him or her for a successful future. Oak Ridge Feeder Zone schools are currently working with the Marzano Foundation to become high reliability campuses with several campuses already receiving certifications. The high reliability structure focuses on improving learning outcomes for all students. Organizations using this structure include several of the nation's top organizations, including Apple, Amazon, and the Navy SEALs. The purpose for applying these same principles to our campuses is to take an intentional look at everything we do and keep our students safe and on track to maximize their potential. Teachers are challenged to improve the art and science that goes into every lesson and are provided support and training so they can find a way to add value to every child. I hope you enjoy this brief look at how the Oak Ridge Feeder campuses are working to give every student a challenging learning environment where they feel safe and engaged. Thank you for this opportunity to show you how we are adding value to every student in the Oak Ridge Feeder Zone. Well, good evening, Vice President Huber. Sorry. I'm so sorry. It's Luffy. I didn't know there was going to be music with that introduction. Oh, let me just start over. Good evening, <laughs> members of the board and Dr. Noel. It is my pleasure to introduce to you tonight the outstanding principals in the Oak Ridge Feeder Zone. First, we have Ms. Paola Gorman at Ford Elementary. <laughs> Ms. Tina Oliver at Kaufman. <laughs> Angela Lozano at Hauser. Thank you so much. Tammy Eldridge at Oak Ridge Elementary. <laughs> Dr. Tara Vandemar at Vogel. <laughs> Mr. Jeff Fuller at Irons Junior High. Thank you. 
Dr. Mike Papadimitrio at the Academy of Careers in Engineering. And Dr. A.J. Levecki, our ninth grade campus yeah. principal. Thank you. At this time, I'd like Dr. Vandermark to come forward and she will take it from here. Vice President Hubert, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. It is my honor to speak to you today about the Oak Ridge Feeder and our progress in the High Reliability Schools certification process through the Marzano Foundation. High Reliability Schools look at the foundational processes and structures that are in place to keep the focus on improved learning outcomes for all students. Many companies such as Apple and Amazon use these same philosophies to constantly review their systems to ensure success for their organization. All of our Oak Ridge campuses are at some stage in the process of HRS certification, and many of the schools in our feeder have already received level one certifications, Oak Ridge High School, Irons, Vogel, and Kaufman. Oak Ridge High School also just became the first high school of its size in the nation to become level two certified. The level one feeder schools are following suit to achieve level two certification in the near future. Being a level one certified campus means that the schools put the students, staff, and the community at the center of their decisions when reviewing structures for a safe and collaborative school environment. Schools seek out input from students, staff, and the community to improve practices and use that feedback to make improvements, which in turn increase school culture and sense of ownership for outcomes. Level two certification involves ensuring the constant cycle of teacher improvement through goal setting, staff development, and continuous feedback by providing support for staff to increase their effectiveness as classroom leaders, teachers are empowered with the tools to add value to every student. Working with the staff at Mar Marzano Foundation, our schools are focused on intentional decision making to provide every opportunity for our students to reach their maximum potential and our teachers have the support and strategies to ensure that success. I thank you for your time and I would like to introduce Mr. Jeff Fuller to speak to you about classroom libraries at Irons. Vice President Hubert, Board, Dr. Knoll, I appreciate y'all's time and listening to what we have going on at Irons Junior High. Uh, we've always prided ourselves on being a little bit innovative uh, and, and with research-based programs and not necessarily that classroom library sets are anything really innovative, but they are uh, something that we have implemented at our, our campus and trying to get across the district. Um, the, the basic premise behind the program, I say program, it's a library set that uh, we put the, the books in the hands of the kids at the closest point of implementation, and that's in the classroom. Research will tell you that kids uh, become better readers whenever those, those books are in their hands. And um, unlike kind of the years in the past where we've had uh, titles like The Outsiders or uh, The Giver, which the kids have it's really kind of outside the realm now. Um, they're, they're not high interest. These books are very high interest uh, books. They're the, the kids. Now, whenever I looked at the research, I kind of looked at what was going on at Irons with the library. I wanted to see how it impacted the library. Um, and I was, there were some unintended consequences that went along with implementing uh, this, and, and that the actual books themselves went down as far as checkouts about 3%. But that, I think that's uh, due to the fact that the books are in the hands right there in the, in the classroom. The good thing was that uh, nonfiction reading had gone up 17%. And that's where you really want the kids uh, reading some of the nonfiction text and the books that they get. So that uh, was promising. We're looking at, uh, we've added, in our total library, we have about 17,000 sets of books or books and titles. We've added about 3,000. Each classroom set has 500 books within those uh, sets. So every classroom, language arts in seventh grade has those, plus our resource and e uh, ELL teacher. And we're also adding this coming year another set for every language arts. So we're going to have about 5,000 extra titles 
in our in our book, which is about a 20% increase over what we have now. So we're very proud of that. Uh, you know, our, our our push in the district has been reading, and reading is fundamental. That's nothing new, and it's our push, and, and we read for a better life, and that's what we're about at Irons. So I, I appreciate your time and listening to what we have at Irons Junior High. And I'm going to turn it over to Rebecca Arntz, the director at Oak Ridge High School Writing Center. <clears throat> Good evening, and thank you so much for this opportunity to talk to you all tonight. My name is Rebecca Arnst, and I am the director of the War Eagle Writing Center at Oak Ridge High School. And these three seniors to my right are Alyssa Horrell, and Isabel Putoff, and Valeria Boskin, three of our seniors. And Alyssa Horrell is going to speak to you just a little bit about what we do at our writing center. Good evening, my name is Alyssa Harrell and I'm a senior and second year writing tutor at our War Eagle Writing Center. So our school's writing center is a peer tutoring resource that's open to students for assistance in all writing disciplines. We recognized the need for a writing center about three years ago and ever since 2016, we've been building and refining our peer tutoring service. We've connected to some more established centers on the East Coast where writing centers in high school are more commonplace and the three of us and Ms. Arntz and Ms. Cox, we actually got to travel to Washington, D.C. this past November to present at a National Writing Center conference. Um, so we gleaned ideas on how to improve our center's services and cater to more students than we had in previous years. And so we got to see other schools' approaches to advertising, recruitment, and faculty outreach. And we got to present our own experience of maintaining a credible writing center in a school with a large student body. When we returned from the conference, we started incorporating the different strategies we learned to help the student body and better our own tutor's writing skills. Overall, the Writing Center has created a culture of peer collaboration and positive experiences with writing and English through our one-on-one -on -one and small group tutoring sessions. And I think on behalf of all of the writing tutors, especially the seniors, we not only feel very prepared for college level writing, but also how to like facilitate, network, um, collaborate, and lead. And so we're very grateful that the district and especially Oak Ridge administration have allowed the Writing Center to even be a possibility and they've supported us through our Writing Center endeavors and our desire for growth. Thank you. Vice President Hubert, members of the board, and Dr. Noel, I am very excited to have this evening with me some of my second grade teachers at Kaufman Elementary, along with several of our Kaufman Cougars, and they are going to share the very famous Kaufman Pen Factory with you. Good evening. My name is Stephanie Shaw, and I am a second grade teacher at Kaufman Elementary. 13 years ago when Kaufman first opened, we wanted to start a project uh, that would go along with our economics unit in social studies. We had the idea for students to create and sell flower pins, and that is how it began. And Ms. Martin is gonna tell the next part. Hi, uh, my name is Jill Martin. I'm also a second grade teacher at Kaufman Elementary. So we took that idea and we ran with it because that's what we do at Kaufman Elementary. <laughs> um, we transformed our classrooms into flower pin factories. Our students worked with, um, they were consumers, they were producers, they were selling goods and services and each student had a job in the factory. They had to apply for their job with an application and to be accepted with that job and then perform and then we took our, our amazing flower pins and we went out into the community and we sold them to our family and friends. And then Miss Carol is gonna share with us what we did with those profits. <laughs> My name is Carol Carroll. I'm also a second grade teacher. Last year, our grade level, our students raised over $4,000 profit from uh, our flower pen factories. 
They donated every cent to charities that the students voted on. An example of the factories that uh, they voted on were the Conroe, a, a chance to bloom dog rescue in Conroe, the Houston Zoo, and the American Cancer Society. Hi, my name is Bella Pollard, and my favorite part of the flower pen factory was being part of the quality control team that took the pens to make sure they looked good. <laughs> Hi, my name is Carter Dennis, and I like wrapping the pens in the green floral tape. Olivia Fondi, I enjoyed wrapping the pins and spending or er, and selling them to my friends and family. And now they are going to deliver a pin to you that they made themselves. So we hope you enjoy. Thank you. No. no. Those are Thank free. Thank you, sir. you, sir. Thank 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 you, sir. Good evening, Vice President Hubert, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. Um, I have the privilege of recognizing the um, Pi Award winner for the Oak Ridge Feeder System. Um, we are honored tonight to be, rep to be recognizing Oak Ridge Baptist Church for their service to our feeder schools. Um, Oak Ridge Baptist has served a number of schools in our feeder zone through a variety of ways. Every year at the beginning of the year, our schools are treated to a basket of treats to give out to our staff to help survive the first week of school, which we all know is usually pretty hectic. Uh, besides that, they um, partner with us and walk beside us when we have um, uh, issues on campus, um, hardships and grief. They've partnered with us during Harvey and um, supported all of the families who needed some help in that. Um, along with, they've provided lunches for STAR for teachers and a variety of other things. It's my privilege to represent, I mean, to introduce to you um, the senior pastor at Oak Ridge Baptist Church, not only my friend, but he's also my pastor, Dr. Galen Cooper. Cooper, it's an honor to have you here tonight. And, uh, you know, it, you hear the phrase a lot, but it's most certainly true with our schools. It does take a village to raise these children correctly. And we thank you for your and your congregation's efforts on behalf of Oak Ridge uh, and, and CISD. An we want to present you with this uh, plaque honoring you as a patron of <coughs> and education, or honoring the church, I should say. I know you want to share that plaque. Absolutely. And no patron ensuring, ensuring education pie award would be complete without a hot without apple a pie. pie. <laughs> Vice President Hubert, members of the board, Dr. Null, it's been an honor tonight for us to share with you some of the things that we're doing in our Oak Ridge Feeder School. Uh, we're very proud of the work that our teachers, counselors, staff do day in and day out 
to help serve our community and help make sure that that model that all means all really happens at Oak Ridge. We believe all kids can learn. We work at that every single day. And I couldn't be prouder of this group that we have in here tonight. Thank you all for your support in doing that this year. We appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We're very proud of the of all of our feeder zones and it's a, it's an honor to get to to talk about each one and, and we were really excited about hearing about Oak Ridge today. So thank you for all of you all y'all done. Uh, item 2D, citizen par participation. Ms. Godfrey, has anyone registered to address the board? Yes. Okay. The next 30 minutes have been design designated for public participation by patrons who have signed up to address the board <clears throat> in accordance with board policy BED. Please remember that the board may not discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on our agenda. The board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administration level, a prompt and e equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. These policies, have pro these policies provide that if a resolution cannot be reached administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly po po posted blah, 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 agenda item. Copies of the district's complaint policy can be found on the district's website. Those who have registered to address the board will be limited to five minutes for their participation. Delegations of more than five must appoint a representative to present their views to the board. Mrs. Godfrey, please call the first person who has signed up to address the board. Thomas Chumbly. Hello. I believe I was here about uh, 11 months ago. Yes. But there has been a bit of a board change, so welcome. Um, I did ask for permission to uh, do a PowerPoint presentation, but you should have something in front of you that you can follow. Yes, sir. So uh, let us begin. I have a lot of information to go through, so I'll be pretty quick, but the visual you have in front of you won't be as good as a PowerPoint, but at least you have something. It's interesting that given who he is and what he accomplished that Einstein thought learning certain types of calculus to be important to his development, success, and perhaps a matter of pride. This year there are private schools, homeschool groups, and college recruiters, chair of an engineering department, uh, of four-year universities actively trying to recruit Evan right here. Uh, apparently you don't need a high school diploma or GED to get enrolled in some colleges as a transfer student. High school graduation is quickly becoming irrelevant for him because it's not needed in order to get to where he wants to go. His vision is a PhD at MIT in some engineering science field. It is also becoming irrelevant because he will have mastered subjects that he will have to repeat just to fulfill his high school graduation requirements. Evan went up to a recruitment table for an engineering program, casually saw some computerized electrical gadget. I don't know what it is or how it works. By the time I had arrived, they were all excited and told me no one at all their recruiting events had solved it before. By contrast, last year Evan's public school teacher said, he's good at fourth grade math. This year I received an apology saying, we just didn't know. Evan's been with CSD since he was four years old. There appears to be a positive trajectory here in getting to know Evan. I just don't understand how a lot of other people can ascertain in a short time what takes others a long time to ascertain. Uh, in the document you have in front of you, you see 100. Evan's in a, a college trigonometry class right now, and that's his most recent test score, which is 100%. You'll see the following page is his score on all his work, which there's so many uh, scores that it's hard to include it there. Everything is 100%. The next sheet you can see that, in fact, his average is 100% in college trig. I didn't do that. I don't know about you. The TSI is a state legislated program to improve student success in college. What it really is is a test designed to see what developmental help a student may need in order to be successful in college. When Evan took the test, the results suggested he needed no help to be successful in college. And in fact, he should take advanced testing to skip classes forward in math and writing. In short, Evan exceeds the standard necessary 
to be at college level. His scores were better, we were told by testers, than most high school graduates. Texas Education Code 26.003 is a real thing. It says a parent is entitled to request with the expectation that the request, sorry, the request will not be unreasonably denied, that the parent's child be permitted to attend a class for credit above the child's grade level, whether in the child's school or another school, unless the board or its designated representative expects that the child cannot perform satisfactorily in the class. It's called a right. It tells us that one of the items explicitly that may be requested is to attend a class for credit above the child's grade level. Should not is ethical language. And in the content, or rather the context of state law means you violate our norms or expected behavior if you do otherwise. Attending a class for credit above the child's grade level at another school is not unreasonable because the law specifically accounts for that as a legitimate part of the request. The intended function of the school is to be able to establish an expectation with regard to the performance of the child in that class. The basis for denial of the request is the expectation that the child cannot perform. The burden of proof is on showing the child cannot perform satisfactorily. Expectations that a child can perform a task is a higher burden of evidence than expectations that a child cannot perform a task. What evidence exists to show my child Evan cannot perform satisfactorily in the class? As a matter of fact, we know he can perform because he is performing. So we have met the higher burden of evidence than required. There exists no evidence that he cannot handle, for example, a, 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 a high school trigonometry class because he's in college level trigonometry class. The job of the school is to figure out what can be expected of Evan here. Seems like a pretty easy job in my view. There are major problems with CI CISD's present plan for Evan. Mr. Chelney, your time's up. If I can give thank you another you. 15 seconds if you'd like to wrap up. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. I submit to you with great confidence, not only are we not just neglecting our duty, we're actually causing harm by holding him back. Uh, last words, I didn't write the law, it just seems to me we should follow it. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Evan Chumbly is next. To show you my opening, Excellency, um, there are two things I really want to do. One uh, is uh, teach you all a little thing called Graham's number, if you ever heard of that. It's not your Graham's phone number, no, it's just called Graham's number, because it is. Um, and if I have time, I'm going to say exactly 100 dishes of pie. All right, Graham's number is just basically um, a bunch of threes. There's some sort of notation to it, but um, it's like this. Three to the power of three is 27. All right, now I'll take three to the power of 27 and you get a little over seven billion. That's G1. Keep going, three to the power of that little number, I mean, that big, <laughs> big number, that's a little over seven billion and you get G2. Keep going until you get to G64. That's Graham's number. And that was actually used in a proof once. And now the 100 is a pie for fun. I have it on my shirt, so uh, you're going to have to read it. Because <laughs> I don't think you know the 100 is a pie. <laughs> Three point one four one five nine two six five three five eight nine seven nine three two three eight four six two six four three three eight three two seven nine five zero two eight eight four one nine seven one six nine three nine nine three seven five one zero five eight two zero nine seven four nine four four five nine two three zero seven eight one Six four zero six two eight six two zero eight nine nine eight zero three four eight 
four two one one no 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 two five three and then I don't know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> You've done fabulously. But <laughs> four two one one seven zero six seven. Boom. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Glenna Sloan. <clears throat> I don't know how you follow that. <laughs> um, uh, Dr. Nell and members of the board and parents and teachers, I appreciate the oppor opportunity to talk to you tonight. Uh, I have no complaints. I am from the Oak Ridge feeder zone, so I didn't even know that um, th I would be a part of that. Uh, I'm sort of the tail end part of it, as you can tell by the hair. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, I live in Shenandoah, and I'm a retired insurance agent. Um, I promoted my husband to the head of his own company. Uh, at any rate, I have um, seven local grandkids who are in the Oak Ridge Elementary feeder zone. Uh, I know you guys work with numbers a lot. Uh, you're working with budgets, you're working with uh, numbers on all those test evaluations. So I wanted to give you a few more so I knew you didn't have uh, enough. Um, but I wanted to uh, give you a little, um, my perspective on the bond referendum. Um, the taxable value of our home is 140,860. Now that's, that's not a whole lot, but um, at $1.28 per hundred, my husband and I pay $1,803 for the whole year, which is quite a bargain, I think, for seven kids. That's, that's pretty amazing. Um, and my understanding is that the base cost for Conroe ISD to educate these seven kids is approximately $5,140 for each kid. That's roughly sort of a rough estimate. And at that amount, I believe that's about $35,980 for these seven kids. That's amazing to me um, 35,000 uh, almost four uh, almost thirty six thousand dollars for seven kids and yet I'm only paying eighteen hundred dollars a year I just I'm kind of blown away um, by that and I, I thank you very much and I think it's a job well done um, but on this bond referendum um, I put pen to paper on that as well. And if I understand correctly, you guys are asking of me a one cent property tax increase, right? For one year. And then with a maximum of three cents increase over the life of the bond, possibly. Not necessarily. So that means my ta school taxes are going to be going from $1,803 per year to $1,845.26 per year. Even on Social Security, I think we can handle $42.26 to upgrade Oak Ridge High School. We have these seven kids who have either gone through, are going, or will go through the fear system. And if you guys can pull that rapid out of the hat, I am well, well, well impressed with that. And I'm going to do everything in my power to encourage my friends and relatives to 
vote for this bond and um, I'm hoping a teacher's raise is in the future as well. So thank you very much. That's all, okay. All right, thank you for all of those who participated in our citizen participation. Um, if we don't have any objections, I'd like to move item 8A up, naming of school principal for Volga Intermediate School up. That's okay? All right, Dr. Knoll. So thank you, Mr. Hubert. Um, it is a night of celebration for the Oak Ridge Feeder. Uh, and it's, uh, it's nice when things work out. You were here to speak on the Oak Ridge Feeder's behalf and also that we could celebrate tonight the naming of a new principal at Vogel Intermediate. Um, as you know, Dr. Tara Vandermark will be opening Suchma Elementary next year, and that has created this vacancy at Vogel. Um, we've seen tonight the level of instructional leadership that is occurring in the Oak Ridge feeder zone. Uh, it requires someone that has um, a strong drive and, and a great educational background as an instructional leader. Uh, what you also see in the Oak Ridge feeder is a sense of family. Uh, and that's especially true at Vogel Intermediate. Um, they are a, a tight-knit group, and one of the uh, things that we wanted to achieve with this new principal is uh, maintaining that family atmosphere. And it seemed very appropriate to bring back an educator that had been uh, a teacher in that building and has gone on to gain administrative experience on another campus to return back to Vogel as principal. So I am proud tonight to recommend Ms. Krista Haymark to become the principal of Vogel Intermediate. I move you approve. Second. We have a motion and a second uh, to approve Ms. Haymark as the principal for Vogel Intermediate. Do we have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, I call a vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Any abstain? Congratulations. Thank you, Vice President Hubert, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. I am excited and honored for the opportunity to be the principal of Vogel Intermediate School. My husband and I moved our family to Conroe ISD because we were searching for the best educational experience for our children. What we found in this great community is so much more. It's humbling to work in a district that has such strong leadership focused on growing teachers for the betterment of all students. When I started at Vogel 11 years ago, I knew I had found my home. Coming back to serve the staff, students, and Oak Ridge community is truly a dream come true. I'd like to thank Dr. Shelley Winkler for plucking me out of the job fair all those years ago, <laughs> bringing me into this fantastic school district and encouraging me to further my education. You sparked the fire that sent me on this path. Your mentorship has meant the world to me. To Tracy Volker, thank you for taking a chance on an inexperienced AP. Thank you for seeing my potential every day and helping me grow into the leader I am. Your thoughtful leadership practices combined with your passion for student success have shown me how to lead with grace, humility, and integrity. To Dr. Tara Vandermark, thank you for being a resource to me during my transition from teacher to administrator. Your support, care, and understanding while I asked you what seemed to be a million questions truly helped launch my career. Lastly, to Amber de Beaumont, thank you for always being my cheerleader and for helping me see the humor in every situation. In attendance tonight is my incredible husband, Wade Haymark, whose constant encouragement, love, and support is the guiding force in my life and the reason I am able to stand here before you. Thank you for always believing in me. My children, Aiden, Audrey, and Evelyn, who are the light of my life and my greatest accomplishment. My parents, Everett and Karen Dyer, whose unwavering love and guidance made me into the woman I am today. I am blessed to have you all here sharing this moment with me. Will you stand so we can recognize your family? <laughs> 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 
Thank you to all my friends and colleagues in the Oak Ridge feeder zone. Know that I am committed to building on the foundation of educational excellence at Vogel and will work tirelessly to serve the students, parents, and staff so that we can make Vogel a place of great pride and high student achievement. Thank you. Congratulations, Principal. Congratulations. Hope we never have to go to your office. They're crying. Both of them, they're crying. Yeah. Congratulations, Ms. A. Martin. Uh, item three, consent agenda. I have not heard any suggestions to take anything off. Very good. May I entertain a motion? I move approval of the consent agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed? Abstentions? Very good. Item four, receive capital improvements update, Dr. Noel. All right. This time I'll ask Mr. Easy Foster to come forward. Good evening, Vice President Hubert, members of the board, and Dr. Nall. It's my pleasure to bring you up to speed on our capital improvements we have throughout, underway throughout the district. I'm going to start with Suchma Elementary, which is scheduled to open in August of 2019. Uh, it's been no secret rain has been our enemy over the past several months, but what I've been telling you, that turning point we've been looking for is putting the lid on that building so we can start to get it into a dry condition. You can see from the overhead picture that the lid is on that building. The roof is being installed uh, during the sunshine that we have sporadically every other day or so. Uh, but that process is moving along nicely. You'll notice that the site work is, is progressing as well. The paving is about 90% done on that site, which is another uh, milestone that we've been trying to achieve out there. So on that site, you'll see that the, the finishes, the, the areas of the building are coming together. This is a look at the entry structure, uh, which is a, this would be a new entry that we haven't seen before in any of our flex schools. On the inside of that building, like I said, the finishers are going in, the ceramic tile, the other colors that make up that building are going in, and on the outside of that building, the brick and the other, other personality features of that building are being installed. So when it talks about schedule, right now they're running right at 200 people on that job site. And just to put that in perspective, when we were building Grand Oaks, we had a maximum number at Grand Oaks of about 500. So a job five times the size should have five times the people. We're running about double that when we're talking about uh, when we're talking about uh, ratios. So, and that's just evidence of the contractor putting the right people and the right stuff in place to make sure that they recover and that the rain is not a factor. And we open that school on time. So, at this point, I am happy to tell you that we will open that school on time in August of 2019. At Austin Elementary, where we're doing a building addition to remove some of the oldest portions of that building that has reached the end of their service life. And you can see here, this is in the same situation we're at at Suchma, where putting the lid on the building has been our, our major, major scope. And you can see here, there's not an open part of the structure from the top. So we're in the same situation we are at Suchma here at Austin Elementary. The contractor here at Austin is also doing the same, putting in the same amount of time and effort. So there's an elevated number of people on this job site as well to make sure that we open that school in August of 2019 uh, as it is planned. This is a good look at the front door as it's taking shape around Austin Elementary. As you know, we're moving the front door away from Highway 105, so the front is now at the back of the campus. So this is where the, the front door will be. On the inside, the finishes are coming together as well. On the outside, the brick and other masonry products are coming around that building. So like, like in kind with such much, it's in, it's in the same schedule shape, and it's right where we anticipated being at this point. And the contractors are doing everything they can to ensure we stay there. At Stockton Junior High School, which is scheduled to open in August of 2020, uh, that project is on schedule right where we would anticipate it being. So you can see the structure is being delivered. Though we Just this last week, we moved the crane for the last time around the corner of the building. It's now on the left side of your screen for the last section of the structure is being delivered. As that structure is being erected, the roof or the lid of this building is going on on the far end of that building too. I want to show you this from the back side of that site. So we're looking from the back across the, the ball field. So the practice fields would be on the left-hand side of the screen, the uh, competition field on the right-hand side. But we're also seeing the area where the solar panels are going to be for this project. So we're starting the process with Entergy on Monday of next week to work out the details of the buyback agreement where we're going to produce power, 
when we're not using the building, they will be buying the power back from us, which makes the payback on that system uh, much more enticing. So that, that agreement is being uh, worked through so that we can turn it over to legal for their approval and make sure we have something that we can all live by. And our, our plan currently is to be generating solar power on that site by the end of this summer so that we'll be able to finish that construction under solar power and save even more money. That's stuff that's not coming out of our, our calculations. That's just icing on the cake, so to speak. On the inside of that building, which we're still on the outside looking through it, you'll see the fireproofing, the building systems, the plumbing, the infrastructure for the electrical, the duct work, all the air conditioning equipment, everything that we would anticipate showing up on that campus is showing up on schedule. Like I said, it is on schedule to be opened in August of 2020. At Conroe High School, where we're doing a building addition, which just opened, which facilitates the renovation where we're at currently, we spent the last uh, month or so going through the demolition process and cleaning up 40, 50, 60 years of building systems that have accumulated above the ceiling. So this is the second <coughs> floor uh, of the main campus, and you're seeing here where we've, we've basically cleaned it out. So over the next couple of months, uh, we will start showing you pictures of this going back together. So the second floor of the building is scheduled to run through the end of August. At the end of the school year, we'll move down to the first floor and start the same process on the first floor. We're scheduled to be on that campus through December of 2019, and currently that project is on schedule and will open just as we asked it to. And that is our update. All right, very good. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Uh, item four, business finance. For uh, a consider award of CSP 18-11-01 internal <coughs> connections E-rate, Dr. Noel. Okay, we'll ask Darren Rice to come forward and he will present the next few items for us tonight. Yes, good evening, Vice President Hubert, members of the board, and Dr. Knoll. It is my pleasure to recommend the Board of Trustees approve CSP 18-11-01 internal connections E-rate to Datavox and NetSync Network Solutions for the estimated expenditure of $3,200,000. This project is for a 12-campus technology refresh. Tonight, we have three items on the agenda that all reference the E-rate program. And here, uh, I'll just give you a general description of the program and it'll pertain to all three of the, of the items. E-rate is the commonly, commonly used name for schools and libraries program, which is administered by the Universal Service Administrative Company, or USAC, under the direction of the Federal Communications Commission. The program provides discounts from 20% up to 90% to help eligible schools and libraries in the United States obtain affordable telecommunications and internet access. There are specific guidelines the district must follow in the purchasing and final, ap uh, final application process for this program. The district contracts with Region 12 to assist us in these processes to make sure that we are in compliance with all of the USAC reg regulations in an effort to receive the highest rebate available from the E-rate program. We typically receive rebates in the 20 to 60% range on our projects. Now for this uh, CSP, internal connections for the campus will consist of any combination of the following items. Wireless access points, routers, switches, racks, phones, uninterrupted power supplies, and any cabling and cabling components related to the installation and operation of these devices. Pricing for this project shall be in effect upon board award through June 30th, 2020, and shall include all costs to complete services required. Under E-rate guidelines for E-rate eligible items, work may begin April 1st, 2019. <coughs> Proposals were evaluated by members of the technology department and reviewed by the purchasing department. Best value offers are recommended for the board approval and noted on the attached summary sheet. Funding will be provided in the capital <coughs> projects fund. And at this time, I recommend your approval. Right. I'll make the motion. I have a motion? Second. I have a second. <coughs> Do we have any discussion for this item? May I just ask a question? Yes. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Rice, what is USAC? Uh, USAC is the Universal Service Administration Company. And, and, and you've mentioned that they have uh, requirements to get this E-rate? Yes, sir. What are, what are those requirements? Um, uh, if I could ask Ryan Tisman to come up. Uh, Ryan Tisman is with our purchasing department, and he has been very instrumental in developing the RFPs and CSPs for this program, and he can answer that, that question directly for you. Okay. I don't know if this will help or not. Mainly, look, is this just like technical stuff we have to have yes. in the system? It's just legal stuff mainly. Uh, some of the requirements are they have to be advertised in the, the paper like normal. 
um, they have to be out for the public to view and bid on or whoever wants to look at it for a minimum 28 days. So you're talking uh, bid requirement? Bid requirements. Okay. Yeah. Right. Bid, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes, okay. That, uh, you know, I, I think that's plenty. That, that okay. Okay. I'm good. Thank you, sir. Sure. I have a question. So we're just approving item 5A at this point? The first one, yes, sir. Since all items A, B, C, and D are all interrelated, if I'm is that not correct? I don't believe C is. C, C is, uh, is, is the well, one C that is not related different. to the so, E-rate. Yes, so sir. items A, B, and D, D are all interrelated. Yes, sir. Correct. I, I would like to move that we, that we uh, amend the motion to include approval for items A, B, and D all at once. Okay. We have an amendment to the motion. Do we have a second to the amendment? A second. We have an amendment and a we have a motion to amend and a second. Any discussion about the yeah, amendment? I, I just have one question. I don't have a problem with that, but I would like to know, I would like to hear the, because it's separate amounts and separate, you've got them broken out into different <laughs> CSPs. Yes. I'd just like to hear the three point million, the, 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 the whatever they are. I mean, you know, just to make sure that it's, yeah. I read, yes, I did my homework, yeah. but I have this thing about just zipping through yeah. things, okay? Yes, sir. I, I'm, I'm all for doing that. I, I hear you loud just, and clear. Just I'm a quick explanation. B is for Suchma Elementary. We have that broken out because it is new construction. So we get different rebates on new construction versus old construction. Okay. And uh, the, the third E rate is for actual internet services, whether it's dark cable or lit cable. And uh, that is for 22 campuses. 21 of them will be receiving dark cable because we have the processes here in our NOC to provide the light to the cable. And then uh, Stewart Elementary will be receiving uh, lit cable lease. Uh, for theirs, so and, and that amount is about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars for that. I'm sorry, six hundred and fifty thousand for the for those services. Okay. And the amount for B, what was it? Uh, three hundred fifty thousand for search B. Amount. Yes. All right, I'm I'm all in. <laughs> okay. Is there any any more discussion about the amendment? All right. Our first vote will be on the uh, the approval of the amendment. So, all those in favor, raise your hand. Any objections? Um, okay. Very good. Um, so we will I now ask for a vote for the uh, for the consideration to award the bids. So we have a motion and a second for that. Any other discussion? No. Motion. Okay. So I think that we because we amended the motion, we just it's the same motion. We just amended it. Okay. We just the I just amendment amended was to it to include three. all three of those items. Is that mm -hmm. so? I believe it's just one motion. Is it Robert's That's rules correct. of order? Am I so correct? So now we vote on the motion. Yeah, that's we're right. Yeah, we're just, the amended we're just, motion. Yes. Yeah, now we're right. voting on the amended motion. We just approved the amendment. Okay. All right. We voted on the amendment. Now Thank we're you. voting on the motion. Gotcha. Okay. Any other discussion? Very good. So um, call the vote. All those in favor? Raise your hand. Any opposed? Abstentions? Very good. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Item four, 5C. B. B is in bold. It's C. 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 Correct. C. 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 Yeah. Item. 5C, consider award of RFP 18-08-02B, Supplemental Contracted Educational Services and Professional Development Services. Dr. Nolan. Right. Yes, I'm recommending that the Board of Trustees award RFP 18-08-02B, Supplemental Contracted Educational <coughs> Services and Professional Development Services to the 18 vendors listed on the attached tabulation for an estimated annual expenditure of approximately $50,000. This request for proposals is a supplementation to the vendors who were previously awarded through RFP 17-01-01A and 18-08-02. Vendors were asked to submit their fees based on the type of contracted services that they provide along with supporting documentation. Service contracts with awarded vendors will remain firm through February 28, 2020 with an option to renew annually for four additional one-year terms through February 28, 2024. Proposals were evaluated by the CISD curriculum and instruction and special education departments as appropriate, along with being uh, reviewed by the purchasing department. Recommendations for award are noted on the attached analysis. At this time, I recommend your approval. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I'd just like to comment. I'm, I mean, this is an item that we could have included in the consent agenda, but I think we're trying to be as transparent as we can. And therefore, that's why we kind of split it out. Mm -hmm. good. good point. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right. All those in favor of the motion? Raise your hand. 
Very good. Any opposed? Abstentions? Very good. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. And we move to item E, receive financial <coughs> reports. Dr. Noel. Mr. Rice. All right. I'm here to present uh, the financial statements for the district for the month of January. These statements will include our general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. The first statement we're looking at this evening is our balance sheet. The balance sheet includes the district's assets, <coughs> its liabilities, and the details of our fund balances. Each month, we like to take a look at our cash and investments. In concentrating on the general fund, you can see that we have cash on hand of $500. We have bank deposits of 603000 We have investments in the state pools of $137.9 million. We have investments with Wood Forest National Bank of $120.6 million. Currently, we have no short-term investments because our investments with Wood Forest are uh, exceeding those rates. Our investment with TCG Investment, investment Advisors, they do maintain our longer-term assets of $51.2 million for total cash and investments in the general fund of $310 million, uh, $390,000. Taking a look at our tax collection progress, this is our first report on tax collection progress. Uh, as you can see, we're about 4% above uh, where we were at this time last year. And we were tracking very well last year, so, so this, is, this is great news. That 4% is about $18 million to the district. So that is money that we would receive, but we've received it sooner, so we're able to invest that money and, and earn interest on it. So that's good news. The next statement we'll look at this evening is our income statement. Our income statement includes our revenues and expenditures for the district. Revenues are broken down into three categories. That includes local and intermediate sources, state program revenues, and our federal program revenues. Looking at the detail of our local and intermediate sources, you can see that property taxes is the largest generator of revenues in our general fund and debt service fund. It's food sales and food service, and it's premium contributions in our self-funded insurance plan. We can also look at our year-to-date expenditures by major category. Uh, in the general fund, largest expenditure is payroll. In debt service, it is our debt service uh, payments. You will see next month that we did make a debt service payment on February 15th. We'll see that reflected next month. Uh, child nutrition is supplies and materials, and is self-funded insurance is contracted services. This is our first look at a projected fund balance uh, in our general fund. Uh, we're projecting an increase in that fund of uh, about $9.1 million. If y'all recall, we accessed the two super pennies or golden pennies in the general fund uh, due to Hurricane Harvey. We were able to do, do that. Uh, that was about $7 million, $6.81 million of this. The other additional revenue is included in interest revenues being higher than we anticipated since the, the Fed has increased rates. And then also some federal revenues that have come into the general fund. And then also our projected fund balance in child nutrition, a uh, slight increase of about $108,000 this year. Taking a look at our 2015 bond referendum status, uh, we've currently expended and encumbered $489.5 million. We have an estimate to complete about $34.9 $34 million, giving us a total project forecast for the bond referendum $524.4 million. And that'll leave us with about $4 million worth of contingency at the end of the program. Uh, Self-funded insurance uh, continues to, to uh, perform very well. Uh, total revenues of the plan is $20.8 million. Total expenses, about $19.6 million. That leaves us with revenues over expenses of about $1.2 million. Um, you can see in our wellness centers that our employees are choosing that as their benefit option. You can see we're averaging about 573 appointments per month at our, at our clinic, so that is good news. Uh, our investments uh, for the month, our par value of our total portfolio is $561.8 million. <clears throat> our pools are currently yielding 2.61%. Our investments with Wood Forest National Bank is 2.64%. Our longer term investments with TCG Investment Advisors, you know, they do have a longer WAM at 351 days and they're yielding 1.87%, giving us a combined portfolio with a WAM of 50 days, uh, yielding 2.56%. And our benchmark, which is the uh, 90 day T bill, is at 2.35%. That is all. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Rice. We do have executive session today. So this is a point of order. 
I know I need to read this. Do I need to also call out the executive session A and B as well? No. Okay. A closed session of the board will now be held on the matters containing in the notice for this meeting as authorized by section 551.072 and section 551.074 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Should the board determine that any final action, final decision, or final vote be required uh, with regard to any matter considered in such closed activities, close or executive meeting or session, then such final action, final decision, or final vote shall be either shall be at either the public meeting upon the recovering of reconvening of the public meeting or at a su subsequent public meeting of the board upon notice therefore as the board shall determine a closed session of the board will now be held and it is 7:42 p.m. the board is now in open session at what time do you have? 906. at 906 p.m. We move to item nine, legal, consider local policy manual update 112 and revision of local board policies, EIA, FFAC, and GKC. Dr. Noll. Ms. Gladys, you will share with Dr. us. Dr. Noll, now, based on our conversations, we were walking out, I don't, do you all want me to go through this? I know you were talking about how fascinating each and every policy <laughs> in this update is and that, you know, it kept you up at night. I'm happy to explain any of them further or you can call me or I'm happy to go over them now. I believe we did our homework on those already. It's all there. So, so we'll be asking for adoption we'll... next month. So if you have any questions in the interim, feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email. Very good. Okay. Do I entertain a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second motion. All those in favor? All right, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.